Jimmy O here from Joe Blow. I'm really thrilled right now because I'm here at Amoeba, my favorite place in the in the whole world. Love record stores, love videos, and this is the place to go. And guess what? We're about to talk with the director of Scream 4, Wes Craven. I'm excited. Check it out. Scream 4. Well, how did you know it was the right time? I think it was uh, that a decade had gone by, you know, a full decade since the last one. Um, first decade of the 21st century, and the profusion of uh, social networking, Facebook, smartphones that can do everything, <laughs> you know, have GPS and you can track somebody and they have, you know, you can take video and I mean, just an enormous amount of uh, saturation of the social con context you know, with uh, these things. So, mm -hmm. the, you know, a large part of the story is centers around that new presence in our in our culture. You know, you obviously you got Nev, you've got the Courtney, you've got all the or originals. Mm -hmm. What would you look for when you went for the rest of the cast? You always look for that young cast that's gonna be talked about, that's full of really smart, charismatic, beautiful cat. <laughs> at least with the girls. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. Uh, characters, you know, just uh, looking for the best of the best. We had, um, we had a pretty good cast. And so we probably, I don't know, 12 young people in, the, in pretty key roles from time to time. Some are cameos, don't last too long. Some, uh, but uh, you know, it's obviously they have to be somewhere close to the characters that Kevin wrote. Mm -hmm. um, and since uh, Emma Roberts was, plays Nev's uh, cousin, she has, there has to be a certain familial, you know, uh, resemblance. But mostly just looking for actors that can really uh, kick it out of the park and make it something more than just a slasher film with. You know, yeah. so so acting. Now, what was the most biggest challenge of coming back to the story and, and making it all happen again? Uh, the biggest challenge, I think, is just what we set for ourselves, and that we knew, you know, we'd been away a long time. The last scream, um, let's say, just didn't do as well as the previous. There's, you know, some reasons of being rushed, not having the amount of time we really needed to have, or things like that. Mm. Um, I think we just set very high standards, that it had, had to be fresh, it had to be new, it had to be scary, uh, funny, but not funny in a way that scary movies funny, and so that was always yeah. a tricky thing to navigate. Um, and it's a murder mystery, so despite all the Facebook stuff and everything else, it's just creating that sort of complex web of deception and deceit on the part of us, uh, you know, with the audience, of uh, not having them guess who the killer or killers were. It seems it's like... It's tricky. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. So, as, <laughs> as, as Jamie Kennedy said a long time ago, everybody is a suspect. No, it's too bad you can't just bring Jamie Kennedy back in some way. <laughs> I keep saying, you know, the, uh, the lost twin from Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie could pull that off. Now, what can you tell audiences about to expect without giving anything away? Well, there's a certain amount that it's known. You know, mm -hmm. it's Nev is coming back to her hometown after having written a book uh, called Out of Darkness. It's the first time she's come back. There's certain ghosts in the town for her. Uh, Courtney and David's characters, um, Dewey and Gail Weathers, have married, despite their very different sort of personalities. <laughs> uh, so Gail's living in this small town of Woodsboro for 10 years, <laughs> going nuts. <laughs> Because nothing ever happens there she can write about. She's trying to write fiction, but she doesn't have that kind of a mind. So, um, of course, as soon as Nev comes back, all hell starts to break loose. So, Courtney's character is suddenly secretly delighted. So, it's, it's, it's things like that. And, uh, you know, I think there's a very interesting um, um, relationship between Nev and, and Emma's character. So, you know, a woman who has obviously been through hell and a young woman who's doesn't know her that well, but fascinated by her, and uh, sort of a mentoring thing in a way, you know, um, I think it's very interesting. It'll be exciting to see a new generation kind of follow this and see Scream Ghostface, probably for the theater in the first time. Yeah. Have true. you thought about that? And Well, yeah, and 10 years, it's a new generation. So yeah. A new decade, new generation. And um, that was part of the pressure, the good pressure was you have to make it something that they're not going to say, well, this sucks, you know. So we really worked very hard, and Kevin came up with a fantastic script, and so, you know, it, it was great to direct such stuff. You know? Nice. Now I have to ask, because Gorehounds, how gory do we get? 
Um, well, we had a tanker truck uh, full of blood out back, and we just uh, basically went out there every five or ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Filled the hoses. I can't believe I'm so excited. <laughs> We're looking at horror here. What, what are some of your favorite horror movies that really inspired you? Scary as hell. Jaws 2? This was a, this is a, oh. <laughs> no. Sorry, never mind. I was like, shocked. <laughs> Jaws. Yes. <laughs> Jaws 2 is the only film where the shark jumps the shark. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, I think it's one of the great classic movies of all time. Didn't do oh. much for sharks. I mean, they, they've had a hard time ever since. But uh, that's just a beautifully classic, scary movie. And the score. Yes, score. yes, fantastic. I mean, one of the scores that anybody within a bar, not in a bar where, but one musical, <laughs> one musical bar, no, oh, that's music from Jaws. Well, speaking of scores, I have to say, Halloween. Cameron yeah, Williamson's favorite horror movie. Mine too, actually. Yeah. I saw it when I was seven years old and it fucked me up for life. <laughs> and then I saw Last House on the Left. Really fucked me up for life. <laughs> Thank you for that. What, when you go back, what do you, do you like watching the old horror films? What was your, the genre that, or the time period that really sucked well, you Well, you know, I, I have this weird history that because I was raised in a church that didn't allow movie going, I didn't see any movies at all except Disney movies. That was the only ones we were allowed to see. So I have no history in a backlog as a young kid uh, watching anything except Disney. So to me, the most scary thing was Bambi. That's pretty scary. <laughs> in fact, there's a line, a line of screen for what really scares you, and the character says, Bambi. Um, but no, I don't have any history of it, but when I started watching, the first scary movie I saw was George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. And a friend um, said, yeah, there's this movie and it's supposed to be scary and fun. Let's go see it. And I actually sort of sniffed and, you know, uh, sounds really dumb. She said, oh, come on. And within five minutes of that movie starting, and even before it started, there was something going on in the theater that you just could sense of excitement. And as soon as it started, everybody was saying the lines and screaming. And I was scared shitless. And, you know, and, and then laughing, and uh, people were running up and down the aisles. It was like, I have never experienced anything like it. And when I was in graduate school, we studied the uh, theater of the absurd, you know, with Ionesco and Beckett and all those guys. And we always read about riots in the theaters, and, you mm. know, people, theater goers, saying, This is not theater, this is disgusting, and all that stuff. Uh, waiting for Godot, you know. And I felt like, you know, this is the same sort of thing. Like, older people can't understand what's going on here, but there's something yeah. that's releasing a tremendous amount of energy and actual fun in the theater. Looking here, I can see so many movies that probably were inspired to your work because of the humor. Mm -hmm. There's Fright Night, one of the greatest films. <laughs> one of the greatest guys. I love this guy. Firestarter. I looked I... at that and said, I'm going to, if I ever do a scary movie set in a winery, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use her as the person that gets killed off in the opening zone. I know, no. exactly. <laughs> Can you believe how she's grown up? It's insane. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, fantastic. The and Exorcist scared the hell out of me. Evil Dead? Literally. Evil Dead. Evil Dead. Absolutely. Well, who are some of the modern guys? I mean, Neil Marshall. Have you seen this? Yes. That's fantastic great. That's film. That's a fantastic film. Uh, Let the Right One In. I, I thought Let, Let the Right One In was absolutely brilliant. 28 Days Later, which is, you know, some years back, but still. Danny is, uh, I think, incredibly oh, talented yeah. filmmaker with enormous energy. Um, he can make it uh, a guy trapped under a rock, having to chop up his arm, interesting. Yeah. So if a director can do that, they're all good yeah. by me. I'm, I don't own Ginger Snaps, but I love this movie. I don't know that movie. You've never seen, oh, this is uh, good. Ginger Snaps? PMS and Werewolves. Oh, gee, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> the last Craven Collection. Collection, oh, what's this, Universal? Yeah. Do you know about this? Or do we have to see someone? <laughs> I think I got a copy of this uh, someplace. <laughs> yeah, so shock, Shocker, Serpent in the Rainbow, and... Um, I love Shocker, by the way. <laughs> I do, I'm sorry, I love it. There's a story to Shocker. So basically, the special effects guy had a nervous breakdown in, in the middle of the film, and he told us, don't worry, all the effects are... They're coming along great. He had invented a new way, supposedly. And at the last minute, he told us tearfully that the 
process was not working and he was a total failure and he was so sorry and then just kind of collapsed mentally and emotionally for quite a while. Oh, so no. we had to go find the negative in all sorts of strange places like the trunk of his car and you know, junkyard and under un unmarked boxes and under it was a nightmare. And the Serpent and the Rainbow was just an incredible experience. We shot in Haiti um, until we had to get out for fear of our life. But, uh, you know, it was six months after Baby Doc was thrown out, so it was kind of a revolution. Any place you'd drive by a cemetery, everything was torn out. All oh the bodies God. were flung around that belonged to Tantan Makut, which was the secret police or any members of the family. So there were bones and skulls everywhere. It was very weird. But oh we God. also had uh, entree to voodoo in a way that normally somebody from the outside would never have because we were really doing a story about voodoo as a religion yeah, and yeah. not just you know making zombies, although that is something that actually happens. Yeah. Uh, so people let us in those ceremonies, and you know, we just had an open call. So the phone would ring at three in the morning. Okay, there's a ceremony. Get down in the lobby, and we'd drive out in a four-wheel drive in the middle of cane fields, and see these fires and everything out there. And you get there, and people are dancing, and I actually stood right next to a goat and watched it get grabbed and slaughtered in front of my head. Oh my god! And they're handing around bread from an oven that's just like still hot, and they're looking at you like, "We're so glad you're here." So amazing experiences. Wow. You know? Uh, but also highly, highly unstable. Yeah. They, they had been treated so horribly by Duviers that if, if you were there to give them jobs, they loved you. And if you couldn't give them a job for anything, uh, they wanted to kill you. And it could change oh like that. Oh, my God. So, uh, yeah, we had a, a couple of really hairy experiences on that. So we, we had to get out a little bit sooner than we were going to stay and uh, went over to Dominican Republic and shot there with there, but all the exteriors, day exteriors, were shot there. Nice. And wow. the big night exterior and the big procession and everything was uh, shot there. In fact, that's the one that kind of went after three days, got out of hand. And I've never had three thousand people pick up stones and look at me like, "Okay, you're gonna die." My God. But, uh, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad but, you didn't, because then, you know, you wouldn't be so many movies, and we wouldn't be yeah. here chatting. It would be legendary, <laughs> but the legend, yeah, you, the legend would be shorter. It would be like, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, we know that. No, <laughs> Ringy Stone. <laughs> well, I think that's it. I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to have to get this, because I, I don't own these. I'm sorry. Oh. I want to. I'm going to have to pick this up, though. But it was a pleasure. Scream 4. great pleasure. Opens. Scream 4, opening on the 15th of April. And it's good. <laughs>